here we are talking about the Halloween franchise. Oh my goodness, my favorite time of the year. This is the coziest franchise. I love these movies and I'm pretty excited to get on Remainders and uh, talk with you about this. But this, is a, this is a franchise that you and I have talked about for many years. Um, and like you were saying, Mm, I'm, we're not going to be pitting these movies against each other. This is a, a franchise that I have nothing but admiration for. So even the ones at the very bottom are absolutely movies I'll be watching uh, my spare time because that's how good they are. There's something about this franchise. You're right. It spans basically our entire friendship. I'm pretty sure we were talking about this franchise oh, yeah. when we first met. And uh, the funny thing about it is I was watching Halloween Ends for the first time last night. And I, I was like, I have to see them all. <laughs> if we're, we're going to be doing this and yeah. um what, one thing that it kind of got to me when I was watching it was like this like officially made me feel like it was Halloween season you know mm -hmm. um there's something about it like when it starts off and it says Haddonfield Halloween and then you see you know what's happening in the town it kind of really does put you in the Halloween spirit uh, at least for, for for me and I know for you as well Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't be a, a Halloween in, in my household without at least watching a few of the sequels. And I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to go see the original here in Chicago um, at a theater. There's always going to be like either the Logan Theater or the Music Box or even the Gene Sisko. They're always going to show the original at some point every October. Uh, but for the sequels, uh, it's always a minimum of a few each year that I get to revisit. And so... And that's what I was talking to you about. Was just, uh, I watched Halloween Ends, so I'm excited to hear what you thought about that. It's been a pretty uh, hot take and divisive one on Twitter so far. Um, but I was watching that and just uh, and then revisiting a few scenes from other ones. And I was like, well, we definitely need to uh, show our rankings because that's been pretty popular on Twitter and everywhere on social media. Everybody kind of sharing like what sequels that they like the most, uh, which ones they flip and hate that's what's kind of great about this uh franchise is it it seems to um unnecessarily uh create a lot of anger from its fans which i think is fun to hear but at the same time it's uh i get disappointed because there's a lot of hate on some sequels that i absolutely love i would say we should probably do a disclaimer here too because of the fact that like i think some of the hate comes to like when we start to talk about halloween 3 when michael myers isn't part of the franchise for whatever reason or if it's like you know doesn't really really focus on him as the character you know which everybody wants to see michael and i think that may have a little bit to do with what happens in halloween ends so we should probably disclaimer at this point i think we're going to talk about what happens in Halloween ends. So if you haven't seen it yet, maybe come back to this episode. I really don't think we can get around talking about it, um, Pat, so. No, spoiler heavy. And if you don't wanna hear that, you can maybe just uh, skip a couple minutes and uh, go past Halloween ends. Um, I'm always fine with spoilers. So yeah, we're gonna be definitely- Yeah, no, I just think we should at least tell people that, hey, we're going to be talking about it. Cause at this point, yeah. um, all of the old ones, I'm sure people have seen, like you said, they do show all of the, Halloween movies, at least they used to on like AMC, like they would do like Halloween day. Here's every film in the franchise that like okay. at least was under the AMC like legal umbrella that they could show. And so then, you know, you go from the original all the way through probably like resurrection or something. Um, always excluding the Rob Zombie films, which I'll talk about in a minute. <laughs> um, but maybe we should just get into the rankings and and, and kind of get down. I'm, I really, really don't know what I'm going to see from you and if we're going to have anything that 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 gets together but i'm excited about this so yeah. anybody else that's listening i'm gonna I, I think i can start if you want and i'm just gonna roll through my list and then we can talk or how did you want to do it well i had a suggestion we so we both have 13 we're including uh you saw halloween ends so we're each at it so um i'm up for anything but i think a, a good way to go about it was to share our 13 each uh, and we start rolling through 13, 12, 11. And then once we get to a point where both of ours is named, that's when we talk about the movie. Ah, so you want to start from the end first. So we'll go like towards- Start the, at the bottom. Like the and then let's say I have X, you have Y, and then my 12, if that matches yours, that's when we talk about the movie. Okay. So do you want me to start with my least favorite film in the Halloween franchise? Yeah, we're starting at the very bottom. And like I said, you're going to share yours. If it doesn't match mine, we're going to go to 12. And then that's when we, when we both have shared ours, that's when we kind of uh, get into the discussion of what we like and don't like about the movie. Okay. So Halloween three, 
is my least favorite Halloween film in the franchise. All right. So mine is, and this is a popular one at the bottom, Resurrection. Mm. I guess you're not a fan of Buster Rhymes, huh? <laughs> we'll get into it. Number 12. Okay. Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Ooh. Mine, mine's going to be coming up later than for that one. Mine, number 12, Halloween Kills. Mm, okay. I, I actually had... Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, then Halloween 4, Re Return of Michael Myers. I feel like 4 and 5 are almost kind of like a film that belong together. So that's why I have that yeah. in that spot. It'll be a minute before we talk about that. 11, Halloween Ends. Halloween Resurrection. All right, let's talk about it. Where, okay, wait, what number is it for you? So I had Halloween three, Halloween five, Halloween four, yeah. and then I landed on Halloween Resurrection. Yeah. So we're talking. Oh, now I'm getting confused. What number is it for you? Uh, ten. Ten. Okay. Yeah. My ten is. Uh, we'll get to it. So Halloween Resurrection, Buster Rhymes. Um, this is the one that seems to be at the bottom for a lot of people, and it is the bottom for myself. It's it's the one that feels the least like a Halloween movie for me. Uh, I don't know. I, so I think I believe it's the time period of this is 2002 and Tyra Banks is in it as well. And there is like Thomas Ian Nicholas is in it, who I actually got to know a little bit here and became friendly with. And I like that. So, you know, it's the age of American pies and things like that. We're trying to put yourself in the time period when this was put out. 2002. Um, it comes after H2O, if I believe, which is um, an excellent film, in my opinion. So, uh, you know, you're following up something that was kind of like really coming back to the story of the original with Resurrection. And it does showcase Jamie Lee Curtis at the very beginning. And something happens to her in the beginning, which a spoiler alert, Michael All Myers spoilers. kills her and she dies. And that's how it starts off. So it kind of like puts you already in like we're not going down that road of Laurie Strode here, but Michael's still around. And it does have a lot to do with like technology, which I feel like when horror films start to like dabble into technology and things like yeah. that, like the internet, it really does open up like kind of a bad like bed to lie in. And for whatever reason, I, I don't have this as, as zero. It's not my favorite by any means, but I do love just like, in any franchise like this, the campiness of things like Buster Rhymes and those kind of things, <laughs> like you know, and 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 I, so I, I, I don't have it at the very end. Um, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, so as I said, disclaimer: every movie on this list, I happily watch. So even though I have Resurrection at the very bottom, I will happily put on Resurrection and enjoy some parts of it. Uh, trick or treat motherfucker is, and then a roundhouse <laughs> and then the roundhouse kick to the face, kicking Michael Myers out of the window. This, it, it, the, the thing is that should make it the best Halloween movie, but it also kind of makes it the worst. So like I said, it's, it's a little give or take with that one. So, I mean, it yeah. was, it is like the direct sequel to H2O, which I have, uh, coming up later. Uh, and yeah, the, the killing of Lori, Jamie Lee Curtis at the very beginning, I remember feel, uh, feeling so uh, unearned. I don't know. It was just like, it almost like felt like tagged at the, uh, at the end, even though they put it at the beginning, um, like they tagged it post-production, just be like, hey, this movie is, is where he finally kills Larry Strode. Um, so that didn't really do much for me. Uh, it was very, uh, it was in like the post, what was it, 2002? It's still in that post like Scream era where everything for like 10 years after Scream in 96 was trying to like at least be somewhat like Scream with like you said the technology kind of the the realistic dialogue and the the meta aspects of it and it just didn't it's the only Halloween movie out of all 13 of them that really even though Michael Myers is in it and he's killing people it just the tone of it definitely doesn't do much for me so but like I said gotcha happily watch it though so yeah 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 for sure okay I like that all right so then should yeah. we go to our number nine uh well, my my 10 uh you said you're nine or your 10 my 10 was halloween 2 okay like the original halloween 2 the original halloween 2 that's john two. carpenter script all right so we're no, close you, we're close on that nice all right you're number nine halloween kills all right that was my number 12 
this movie is bonkers. <laughs> what do you got for this? Too one? much. It's too much. Yeah. It's too, too, too much. Um, it's interesting yeah. to think about that's a, it now. That's a perfect way to put it. it yeah. It's, it's, it's honestly, it's okay to think about it uh, now that I've seen Halloween ends and like me trying to wrap my head around like why it was the way it was. I feel like this this trilogy, let's say, of these newer Halloweens, Halloween, Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends, I really feel like they're they're focusing on the community, which is Haddonfield and those. And that's why I think Halloween Kills is very much like the town coming after Michael. And it's just a, yeah, it is bonkers. That's a great way to say it. I mean, yeah. your thoughts on your, it's pretty low on the list overall for you. So it is. And, and when I say bonkers, I usually use bonkers in a uh, loving way. Uh, I have yeah. one coming up. I have, I have a movie that's very high on my list that I will describe as bonkers. And I mean that in the best possible way. This one, as you okay. said, it's just, it tries too much. I love, I love everything that they were trying to do with it. Uh, this is David Gordon Green's uh, second in his trilogy. Um, this is the one that came out just a couple years ago. Um, ha- I mean, a, like a, th- a quarter of the movie is like set in 1978. So they go back in 1978 mm, when the original true. movie is playing and they show like the cops who are not like uh, the main cops working with Lewis. They show them like, oh, well, you got this Michael Myers killer on the loose. What are we going to do? And it shows like some interactions that... Uh, and, CGI Donald, Donald Pleasance. Yeah, 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 right, right. And and so that I liked where it was going with that. And then the hospital stuff with Loomis, uh, basically attacking him, um, if I'm remembering that right. Uh, yeah, they definitely just tried to do too much. And even though I liked where all of it was trying to go, like it just, it felt like a hot mess. And I don't know, that's the thing with, with both ends and kills. I feel like, uh, they're going to age well because okay, the, interesting. the expectations and, and and that's that's another thing I just wanted to say about this entire franchise every single sequel was hated upon release sure like, in terms of critically and kind of fan base nobody was really happy with any of these sequels like all the beloved sequels like a lot of people put four and five like really high up um but the reaction to these movies uh, were not that great uh, at the uh, time of release. And so like it's over time and rewatching them, yeah, they, yeah, all, they, they all get better. Every single Halloween movie really gets better with age as you watch more of it and you kind of understand what mm, kind of uh, direction that one was going. So that's, sure. uh, so that's why I'm giving, uh, that's why I'm kind of looking forward to the future in terms of watching the, the second two David Gordon Greens. And uh, I think they'll probably age well because of, of what they do. And I uh, have, well yeah. Um, anything else on kills? Jim Cummings? So just for, for me, for kills, like saying it's too much. I mean, it was too much gore. It was too much like in your face. It was too much backstory. It was too much um, Michael unleashed and i don't know maybe that again in the grand scheme of the trilogy here like you said uh it needed to set up like what was going to happen in ends uh and be the middle ground so maybe that's why they were like okay let's have michael like just do it like i don't know how this whole trilogy was written like was it all written to make sure that it was a complete story with all three if it was i think that it's trying to do that just to be like kind of like lord of the rings with when you watch the two towers it's like fight sequences and war and like you know all of the the direness of um things aren't getting better and so that the last movie can kind of be like some sort of like um jubilee of like happiness in a way and not that the yeah, Halloween yeah, yeah. franchise is ever going to be a jubilee <laughs> of happiness but you get what i mean like it's it's like you know they're going to come to some sort of um uh well ending so that's the point of this newest one in the franchise so that's that's it for me i think that halloween kills was trying to be you know bridging the gap between the two and uh the 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 bookend you know the beginning and the end of the series yeah 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 so i don't uh we could talk more about whether or not it was a trilogy um i i'm not sure if it was originally planned but in my opinion the david gordon green definitely doesn't feel like a trilogy at all Like if I watch all three of them, like it's pretty incoherent, but if I watch each one separately, uh, there's a lot more for me to like in each, each one, because I feel like there was stuff because 2018 hit so big at the box office that they probably maybe added more than they were originally planning. 
I don't know, like I said, I, I forget if it was originally a, a, um, a trilogy and then COVID probably fucked production shit up in terms of um, when the scheduling was for each one and how they were I mean, it did. Released. I remember it was yeah. delayed to come out too. So, you know. Yeah, Kills was definitely delayed at least like a year and a half. Um, but yeah, like I said, it doesn't feel like that great of a trilogy, but each separate one, uh, there's a lot more stuff for me to like about it. And then I love that Jim Cummings from Thunder Road, which we will eventually cover one day, he shows up as one of the cops in, in the 1978 show, uh, um, flashbacks. And he's, yeah, uh, he's, yeah. he's just a good uh, tone for that. He's so great. Um, okay, so that was your number nine. Number eight. Yeah. So I had Halloween 2 there as number eight. Looks like we're now kind of getting closer. You didn't really like Halloween 2. Well, it's lower in your list, let's say. John Carpenter's Halloween 2. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's number 10 for me. Uh, again, the, the my list is a least favorite to favorite. There's still favorites at the very bottom. So 10 is not of anywhere course. bad. Yeah. So, I mean, my first reaction of Halloween 2 is it's, it's just kind of the most basic of all the uh, sequels like it does it's an immediate sequel to the original so it just tried to copy the original uh the most and so it kind of felt like the safest and um it's 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 super well done like it's 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 a great horror movie it just it doesn't go off the rails like basically every other sequel and that's like I yeah said, that's yeah, what, that's like, what i like, like about it yeah like and it's just not quite as good as as well crafted as the original obviously um so that's always kind of where like i've been on it like i definitely like watching it um carpenter doesn't he uh, he doesn't he's quoted that he was completely drunk uh while writing the script and he did it mo- <laughs> he did it he did it mostly for a paycheck and he's just like yeah i fucking uh, that's why i stopped uh, uh drinking while writing because of halloween too so <laughs> oh wow i hadn't heard that that's yeah, great yeah. probably still drink it but just not while writing um yeah so what do you think about that you're number eight i mean halloween, halloween two, two agreed um it's a little bit like i said second verse same as the first i i think that um he did yeah go right into it which i like i admire that it's like okay Lori's in the hospital michael myers is still out there like yeah i shot what is it, the famous line i shot him six times or uh, uh donald pleasance at the beginning you know and and again we should also talk about the great donald pleasance uh in these sequels uh he he exited the the because of his death on on six but he was in like every single one basically up until well i don't think he was in halloween three but um yeah nobody he, was in halloween he, three yeah. right and and so like for me i love donald pleasance like he's great obviously loomis uh sam sam loomis from psycho using the name then obviously going into the scream west craven uses uh um loomis again for uh billy loomis uh oh, yeah. you know i love that like sometimes these guys like all pay each other respect and um donald pleasance is a great character actor that i'm glad we can talk about uh 007 franchise as well but here in in halloween 2 there's some great moments like that donald pleasance you know like going going off the deep end going crazy hunting them down and you know he's still in haddonfield and killing people so yeah enjoyable but nothing really new being introduced it's just kind of like here's the second one and yeah you know he's exactly. the same thing <laughs> so that's why that's both why i like it and why it's probably just not as high as the other ones so yeah. um to yeah yeah i mean that's basically all i have to say on that one um number seven so seven for me is halloween from 2018 wait i'm sorry i didn't say my eight. <laughs> oh, uh my number eight rob zombies halloween one okay which you have not said so we're going to talk about that later all right now we can say seven Okay, Halloween from 2018. All right, 2018 for you. I have not said that one yet. My number seven, Halloween three. Your okay. number thirteen. We've talked about that. That was uh, my last, my least favorite. So this, yeah, this, the ranking really doesn't matter where it is on this one because it's such like an independent movie. Uh, not in, well, I mean kind of independent movie, but just like individual separate horror movie that has no relation to the michael myers story at least even though well the they tr- i think they try to i think they try to like you know eventually like in 666 and stuff like that try to like tie some of it back in yeah. yeah they try yeah but with astrology just, like, and different things like that 
yeah, it was just un- unfairly dismissed because it didn't have Michael Myers at the time. But if it was just released as like a horror movie without naming it Halloween at all, like they just called it this movie, the season of the witch, um, people would have loved it immediately. And, but and rightfully I, so, people like it now because it's it, it's become a cult classic. People will realize it's it's part of the Halloween series. It just doesn't have Michael Myers, and it's an awesome horror movie on its own. And yeah, I would say like I think it also like uh, led way to things like um, Stranger Things and different stuff like that. Like sort of oh, like yeah. the tech, like the music and everything is so so synth. Um, and I think uh, like Stranger Things must have like studied a movie like this a lot to um, pull things to bring into like their universe, which is obviously very popular. So you're right, over time, this movie has aged pretty well. Um, I do have it as three because we're talking about Halloween. And if you're talking about a Halloween movie, it's gotta have Michael Myers for me. So yeah. I put it at the end. I don't think it's a terrible movie, but as far as the Halloween films ranked, it, it belongs at the bottom for me because it doesn't have Michael Myers in it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think it's it really doesn't matter where you put uh, Halloween three, um, it's its own thing and you know, it is what it is. Tom Atkins right. fucking rules. I love him. Uh, you know, a carpenter staple, you know, um, uh, he would have fit in the thing, but he was in the fog. Uh, so essential for so many eighties films. So I always cool. love to see him. Um, all right. So that was my number seven. Your number six. Halloween ends. All right. Let's talk. That's, so where pretty, you that's pretty high for you. I love it uh 11 yeah. i had it at 11 i'm excited to hear your reaction because like i said at the beginning this movie has become so fucking divisive people are, are going bananas on the way this movie is rolled out so what are your I'm, thoughts well i'm not going to comment on anything that the internet is saying because uh i haven't looked at any of that um i don't like to really like let that fog my yeah. opinion on movies um but i will say that this movie for me was really enjoyable I enjoyed it from start to finish. Um, I feel like this movie is going to age well, like you talked about before. I really feel like they've got something that they're introducing here. It's called Halloween Ends for like a reason. And can you hear this uh, helicopter that's like literally hovering over my place? Sorry, maybe we'll wait for this. Oh, maybe a tiny bit. It's good vibe setting. These things that like, uh, there's a hospital nearby. So like, they just like, um, kind of like shake the uh, foundation. Anyway, going back to Halloween ends. Um, I watched it last night. First time, first hot take. I loved it. Um, I think that it's got so much that I didn't expect after seeing Halloween kills. Um, I had heard from people that you don't see Michael Myers for a while. That didn't bother me at all. I like the fact that like the town is, they, they, they set it up very much at the beginning that the town is, reeling from all the tragedy that's happened from Michael Myers, you know, it's, it's been, and some people kind of dismiss it like usual and most Halloween things, which is always the mistake. Um, yeah, Cause yeah. it comes back, but then they show like the suicides and stuff like that, that are happening to people like really saying like this really fucked up everybody. And so that's where like the kills thing kind of comes into this, where it's like, you know, they're all like rallying together, but now they're all like apart again. And then, you know, having the character of Corey kind of becoming like, okay, it's happening again. Like this is happening to um, a kid who's misunderstood, who something tragic happened to him and now is placed into this role of like demonized because of something that he couldn't, you know, control. It was an accident. And Lori and Lori's granddaughter and the way that they are mixed into it is really interesting like Lori wanting to help him and kind of having that connection to him but then also seeing eventually like that this Corey character is evil and that he's gotten that way and they've even had talks with the people uh in the town like yeah he was a really good kid but now he's gotten to this place of madness that I don't even see that Corey that we recognize and of course he's being bullied and all of the things that happen right to make him sort of this evil thing. And then they throw in, which may be a little far-fetched, Michael Myers kind of training him away. And, you know, he's yeah. uh, he's in it, but he's not necessarily like the focal character. They're, they're focusing more on this like uh, birth of a new uh, serial killer in Haddonfield. And so for me, for all those reasons, I love that they went out on a limb and tried something different. Um, I think that they were successful in it. Are people going to love the fact that Michael Myers now is no longer 
around. Um, I mean, who knows what the next one will be, right? I mean, they can't kill the franchise. I just feel like they have to, right? But no, what it's, do you the, it's the end of this trilogy. That's what this means. Michael Myers will be uh, in a different uh, a reboot. So, I mean, we're just stepping back. He, he's not going anywhere. This is the end of uh, this trilogy. And and also of Laurie's uh, or Jamie Lee Curtis's story. That's also kind of the ends that I read it as. Like, I mean, I mean says, what they asked us to do from the beginning of this was to say, forget all the movies in between. This is what happened directly, you know, after yes. the first two or whatever. And that's what's another thing I love about this franchise is that it's a choose your own adventure. Uh, there's basically five different paths that you can watch these movies through. Uh, in terms of which is a sequel uh, to what. So like this trilogy from David Gordon Green, which includes the 2018 Kills and Ends, it's a direct sequel to the original. So Jamie Lee Curtis is not uh, his uh, sister in this storyline, as opposed to what all the other sequels from the 80s introduced. Um, and that's what I love about it. It's that you can watch it uh, through all the different paths. Um, one thing that really like uh, uh, put a, um, a bow on um, ends for me is when I was looking at um, David Gordon Green's, um, there was a note that he put on Twitter like two years ago, um, or maybe a year and a half, where he submitted the script and he submitted it to John Carpenter to read and his note was, let me know if it's too much like Christine and that just basically uh, opened up the whole door in terms of what he was going for with Corey. Um, for anybody who hasn't seen Christine, it's a John Carpenter movie based on the Stephen King um, book where the killer car basically uh, influences the teen uh, to start becoming a killer himself. And he, the more he uses the car, the more he starts kind of embodying the killer spirit of the killer car. And so that's definitely how I see it now with Halloween ends. Like Corey was just starting to embody the spirit of Michael Myers. And uh, the more he did it, the more cool he became, the more he was able to be attractive to Lori, um, or not Lori, um, um, Jim Lucas's granddaughter. And just seeing it through that prism of the, like what he was trying to go through in the writing that definitely made me like it a lot more. So, and like I said, it's, I think it's going to age really well in terms of it being its like own independent movie that you can watch on its, uh, uh, on its own. And, um, and plus it has uh, a band, uh, a group of uh, bully uh, band uh, members, which is the, the most insane uh, incorporation of a, a bully into a movie that I've ever seen. <laughs> <It's> fucking, <laughs> yeah. These band kids are the bullies of, of the movie, and uh, that's fucking great. I love it. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to love of this movie, in my opinion. Um, at the end of the day, how it lasts uh, and how it's seen in the franchise, I think will be yet to be seen. But, you know, um, anybody getting upset about it, if you can just, like, kind of watch it as, like, a good Halloween movie and, like, you know, take all of the... Michael Myers is no longer, you know, they kill him, right? That's the, <laughs> they put him in like a uh, car cruncher at the end. Uh, like we said, spoiler alert, you guys, but they, they, they literally, there's no coming back from that unless some mess yeah. mystical like dust gets uh, sprayed on him. They really end it and they really kill him. And that's again, the town, like they even like kind of carry him to the town, like Mussolini, like, um, you know, like when they drag Mussolini through the town, it was very much like, let's all of all of us have to like come to a catharsis of this monster finally being caught dragged through the town square put into this device that crushes him for all of eternity and now we yeah. can all move on i mean they didn't they didn't make it they didn't end it with like he may come back it was like this is it you know and um, yeah. you got to you got to yeah. love the, the balls of that like for a franchise that's as beloved as it is to end it for real. Um, nobody's seen, I don't think anybody's seen that yet. You know, I don't think anybody's seen a final end to Michael Myers yet. Well, I mean, yeah, we did. It's in my number six. Six, H2O. six, six? No, my number six, which, uh, we, we, which I was about to announce. Uh, H2O. Did you already say H2O yet? H2O is high on the list for me. So okay. uh, I didn't say it yet. Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, we don't we have to get too out of it, but that's he dies at the end of that one. No, pretty, but he doesn't. But because they tell you in in resurrection, yeah, but that's a that sequel. It wasn't. As in, like, as in, they showed ends and they 
could in theory create a sequel to ends and be like, oh, that wasn't actually him that went in the grinder. You know what I mean? So as in like, as in <laughs> yeah. that's what, like anything is, is possible. Well, that's what right? I'm saying. But like, that's when they released H2O, um, they, she cuts off his head at the end. And like, that, that was like how that movie was marketed. It was like, yeah, Michael Myers is dead. And this is the end yeah. of it. You know what I mean? There's yeah, no, okay. there's no right or wrong in these movies. And that's what's great about them. So well, I, anyway, see, see, because of the fact that they open with, um, Jamie Lee Curtis in the mental institution and everything. I felt yeah. it was like literally like a, a, a transition from H2O. Like that's what happened to her after she killed Michael. Right. So I thought it was still in the same universe. That's why I was saying like, you know. Well, yeah, we it's, still, really in the, it's still in the same universe for sure. I've just, I guess this is more of just a, a time question. It's like, because Halloween ends is the last movie we saw. There's no current sequel to it. So, you know, at this yeah. point in time, he is dead with that one, but. Yeah. in theory they could make another one but you know <laughs> okay 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 yeah yeah <laughs> so what did you about. have okay, but that was my after... number that was my number six h2o which you have not said yet so number we're on to number uh five now okay uh halloween two rob zombie oh i haven't said that yet my number five is curse of michael myers 666 aka paul rudd <laughs> Yeah, that's the way everybody remembers that movie, isn't it? Which okay, you have not well, said yet. I haven't said that yet. Yeah. Okay. Number four. You're number four. Halloween Rob Zombie. Let's talk number about one. It. Wait. I fucking love this yeah. movie. I okay. can't believe. Yeah. Uh, I love this movie. I love what Rob Zombie's done with it. I will say that I wanted to love the monsters from Rob Zombie, and I didn't. Um, except it was visually beautiful. <laughs> And it was awesome. And like nice. the campiness, I applaud him for, but I just couldn't get through it. Um, and I was so excited for the Monsters remake. And I'm not like a huge, huge, huge Rob Zombie fan. I don't really love, you know, House of a Thousand Corpses. I don't really love Three from Hell. I don't really love all of the films that he's made. Mm. But I have to say, Halloween and Halloween 2, he did an amazing job. I've been saying that year after year after year and i feel like people are finally coming around to it a little bit but even my friend Lindsay, we talk every year and she's like they have the worst movies in the franchise and i'm really <laughs> animated about it like he, he 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 did something different with it where he went into talking about michael's past and i think that's where some people kind of like are like no there should be no reason why michael myers is the way he is like he is just like pure evil yeah that's how it was that's what the scary part about it is I just think he, he, I needed that backstory and I liked it. Um, he's still pure evil, but this Rob, Rob Zombie does such a great job of really exploring like the uh, brutality of Michael Myers. And I think yeah. one and two really do that. I think two, when you get into it, we can talk later when we match up on that, but that, that has a little bit more of like a psychological uh, aspect of it um but halloween the original remake of rob zombie he also brings back uh danielle who um was from four and five who i love um she, Harris, she's yeah. great in it billy bibbit from um uh cuckoo's nest i forget the act uh, brad uh dorf forget his, brad, he's great in it yep, yep uh it feels so like 70s like in a way but like new and just like every time michael is on screen it's like holy shit like the energy of it is so big right. um yeah and it's like it's not holding anything back with that it's like this guy is brute force and he's coming and you're not getting away um your thoughts on halloween rob zombie uh yeah to touch on your last point um it feels big it both feels big like um uh emotionally the movie and but then also just physically like he's like a hulking presence in this movie like and that's what um i'm a little bit more high on uh rob zombie in general as a director than you are i think he's a pretty mediocre to uh, not great director but he is uh he does have a vision uh that he is able to get on to screen with it with every single one of his movies every single one of his movies has images that have stuck with me like I could still see like images from a couple of movies, movies that I've only seen once that like uh, once I saw them, like they were just like imprinted on my brain. Like, like I said, you know, mediocre filmmaker, but like he was able to translate 
what he saw in his head on the screen, at least in some parts. And I think this is definitely uh, present in both Halloween uh, one and two of his, like uh, the images of Michael being like carted out, like walking out of the, uh, uh, through the mental institution, like in shackles, like like those images are like, are tattooed on my mind because of how cool they look and just how much it like just showing that these is this, this hulking presence. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I think it's a super under, appreciated uh movie um i think i sent you like just this meme just showing how at the time again like i said every halloween sequel was, is is usually met with like ambivalence at the time of release but then over time grows with appreciation and i think his movies are getting a lot of uh attention now uh with the last three coming out um just because they try to do their own thing you know, that was the complaint about it at the time, like showing that his backstory uh, and showing that he, there was like an actual person to begin with. That's what that's the main thing that people were complaining about at the time. And and now that's something that people are like, yeah, that's a, he tried to do his own thing with those two movies. And and that's what makes them unique and definitely worth uh, watching. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the violence is pretty brutal. He doesn't really stab people. He just like punches people while holding a knife and then just punches through their body while he just happens to be holding a knife so um you know uh like i said the brutality of it is on on display if these if this last um halloween halloween kills and halloween ends if this last one was about the townspeople in the community of haddonfield i really feel very much like rob zombies were about michael myers and the and the sheer force and brutality of this killer yeah no I, I love it so much. So wait, that was your number four. Four. That was my number eight. But as you can tell, you haven't. I haven't said Halloween too, so we'll get to that later. All right. So that was your number four. My number four uh, is Halloween four. Four for four. The Return gotcha. of Michael Myers, which you've already said. What was that? Your number? Eleven. That was your eleven. All right. So this so- one. Uh, yeah, you can go for it. No, all I was going to say is like four and five are lower in my list here because of the fact that I do feel like they're, they're sort of like bundled together. Yeah. This one is a little, yeah. little bit more ca- that campy. And I think you're this is where you're going to add the bonkers stuff into it because this is a little bit more campy. Four and five are a little more yeah. campy. There, they, there are like some pretty serious stuff, especially with, like I said, the, the Danielle, I forget uh, her name and the, the character's name in it, the little girl they really do a good job of like adding her and like i think you know showing like how uh, like a younger kid is affected by michael myers and um but there's like so much 80s campiness around it the bumbling detectives that are in it like um you know like it it almost feels like killer clowns from outer space like campy in those moments so they're lower on the list for that because i just don't feel like there's some and his mask is kind of like wonky in it for me. Like it's like a like, like bright white kind of like, um, I don't know. Like the hair is really weird. It's not my favorite version of Michael Myers. So anyway, that's why it's lower on the list. Your, your thoughts? Yeah, no, um, it is. It's, a lot of the stuff that you're saying is kind of the reason why it's, it's one of the most revered sequels out there. Like I think a lot of people put number four as one of their favorite sequels it's a pretty popular one it definitely uh captures the vibe of michael myers uh really well that's why that's what i like the best about it uh and and halloween well, how, so, how so i'd like to know, know what you mean by that well it's a perfect blend of nostalgia uh honoring kind of the original uh what they were doing like what year did that come out it was 1988 so it was it was exactly 10 years after uh, the original and in the title itself is it the return of Michael Myers. This is the movie that came out after season of the witch and everybody was like, Oh, why is Michael Myers not in it? This is just garbage. Mm. And so this is the, them getting back on track with it being a Michael Myers story. And I just think, you know, I love so many of the images. Um, if you're at a, um, if you can remember the, uh, the intro, uh, the uh, the opening credits to this one are so fucking amazing. Definitely the best opening to any Halloween movie, you know, aside from the first one, but just the music. Um, it's it just showing these images of like this desolate um, um, rural community 
you know, uh, a little bit outside of Haddonfield, I'm assuming, where it's just like these rundown farms, nobody's around, uh, you just have like these ramshackle Halloween decorations. It's just the, the most uh, creepy opening to a movie in any of the uh, sequels, and I love it so much. Um, and then, yeah, just having it come back with Donald Pleasance and uh, introdu- introduction of uh, Jamie is her name, uh, Daniel Harris. Oh, yeah, Jamie Lloyd, Jamie Lloyd right? Yeah, exactly. And she is like, uh, I think the underrated MVP of like these movies, like her in four and five, like she's so good at like a a child being like traumatized by Michael Myers. Um, I think she's great in both of them. She's an incredible actress in general. I've seen her in other things. And like I said, in the the Halloween, the Rob Zombie versions, like she was awesome in those. I, I mean, really, really awesome. I really love her as an actress. Yeah. Yeah, no, she's a perfect blender. Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, that's kind of why I put it up there. Um, and I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with that. So that was my number four. So we are on to your number three now. Halloween H2O, number three Ooh. of all time Halloween Ooh. movies in the franchise. I love this film. Did you get to go see it uh, at that screening? Just recently, I saw it in a friend's backyard yeah. here in Los Angeles, and nice. uh, I saw it in the theater when it first came out in 1998 um, on midnight showing where they showed the original Halloween and then they showed H2O, which I seared in my memory as one of my coolest movie going experiences. Oh, yeah. And then also seeing this uh, in the backyard where I got to see it with my girlfriend who had never seen it. And she's like, doesn't love <laughs> these types, types of movies um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and rightfully so who should really love movies about a, a serial killer stabbing people you know but at the same time I told her like this movie has a little bit more to do about the story and you know she she it was lighter because she saw Halloween Kills with me like last year and she was like I'll never watch another one of those movies again because it is just so <laughs> so yeah, yeah, stabby yeah, yeah. and brutal you know right um so, yeah so how many how many Halloweens has she seen so she saw kills and H2O with you with like, she's probably seen the I would. Yeah. She's not one of those people who like loves the Halloween franchise. No, yeah. That's like, right. Uh, I'm sure she's seen the original, um, but a lot of times too, <clears throat> just horror in general or anything that's kind of scary is not really like high on her list. So a lot of times right. like when Halloween comes, she like <laughs> plays up to my, uh, All right. yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's nice of her though. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, yes. I was just saying like, if, if Halloween kills is one of the only ones you've seen, then yeah, it's, it's, it's not the best one to, to check out. Um, right. Yeah. Oh, I love, uh, H2O. That was my number six. Um, I was in eighth grade when this came out and I was like, so pumped for it. Cause I had, that was really only like a couple years after I, like I'd seen the original and it was like, this was like the first like movie in the theater that I would uh, be able to go, like go and see um, uh, that had Michael Myers in it. And, you know, I want, I rewatched it a couple years ago, definitely holds up. Like it is such like a perfect relic of nineties. It was 98, I believe. Um, 98. Yeah. Right after scream, even though it didn't feel like the influence on scream was like totally there. I feel like they really tried to honor the original. And so, yeah, like, like I was saying before, that, like that's the storyline where that Michael Myers is her brother because it's a direct sequel to the first five, essentially. And as I mentioned, yeah, it did, it did feel finite uh, at the end when she chops off his head. Uh, at the time, it's like that was like the end of the story. It felt, it felt satisfying, end of Michael's story, at least. And um you know the fact that it wasn't the actual case doesn't ruin it or anything but like as a as a, as a single movie to watch like it's such, such a perfect fucking ending for it i love it and you get to open well, we with joseph cool j you got, we got cool j also jimmy lee curtis's mom is in it who obviously uh has the nod to psycho oh, right, right, <clears throat> janet right. lee and then also um how could we forget to say josh hartnett introducing josh hartnett and michelle williams in this so two people that went on to be pretty big stars are in this uh movie in 1998 and also just like kind of going down the road of like revisiting the laurie strode character and where she is in her life and you know what halloween means to her she's obviously like drinking a lot and um i kind of liked that they went down the uh here comes that uh helicopter again sorry <laughs> they just want so, to get yeah. in on this conversation dude they want it they want yeah. to hear all these pics um, seriously it takes my apartment well and also the first kill 
Who's the, you remember who's the first one who gets killed in that movie? Who does? The first kill, the first victim in H2O. Joseph the Gordon-Levitt. First... Oh, with the nurse <laughs> from the original who was like, hey, come check out who might be in my place. Yes, yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is in it, comes in. and He's a hockey, realizes... hockey player and he gets a hockey... Uh, uh, hockey... I can't even say a, bl- a blade to the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A skate. Yeah. To yeah. the face. Yeah. That was the ending of him, but uh, also kind of cool way to kind of like have Donald Pleasance be introduced uh, a little bit into it because like, you know, they had the clippings on the wall and they show him yeah. and everything. And, uh, I, th- I believe the title sequence also has his voice in it, which is cool. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So H2O, we both love kicks ass. It was number three for me. That was your number three. My number three, Halloween 2018. Damn. Okay, let's talk about it. Why? Remind me of, you, of where you placed that one. You had uh, uh, seven, I have seven. that. Yep. Seven. Yeah, that's number three for me. Uh, this one came out in 2018, and I was very excited for it. Uh, David Gordon Green is a director I've enjoyed. He's made a, a good amount of indie films. He did Pineapple Express. A uh, very odd choice to direct uh, a horror movie in general, especially such like a huge uh, uh, reboot. And I think Halloween 18, in 2018 hits the absolute perfect blend of, of new and nostalgia. Um, I think it, it is pretty expertly directed. I think it's the best aside from the original, obviously. Everything we say right now is caveat um, to the original because uh, that's just how it is. Uh, I think it's the best directed of all uh, the sequels in terms of just like straightforward uh, narrative and, and introducing Michael as a, a character to continue his story. And um, I love the ending, essentially. It, it, it really is up there with um, H2O in terms of the, the temporary demise of Michael Myers, that, that entire end scene of the three generation of women um, fighting Michael at the house and him uh, burning in the basement. Uh, I think it's just the most perfect uh, ending for any of these movies that can come out. And I was just so pleasantly surprised with it. I had such a great time watching it. I visited it again last year and still holds up. Um, like I said, I think this one came out and it was uh so well received it's it is one of the few movies that actually got decent uh reviews uh compared to all the other sequels and that obviously made like a lot of money and so i think they kind of adjusted that and and kind of pushed through kills and ends in a way that maybe they didn't quite have to at least in the trilogy format because like i said this movie just stands alone and I could just watch it in any um, format in terms of like a reboot, a remake, whatever you want to call it. Like, I think it's just uh, great. Great. Yeah, I, I, I did love it too. It was um, kind of in the middle of my list. Uh, yeah. But um, one of my favorite things about it too is like, you know, I always love a good booby trap movie, right? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. finding out that Laurie Strode has kind of like got this protection around her place, you know, to just in case. And then you're going to get to see all the trap doors and things that happen throughout. That's always interesting. And it adds to like a nice element of this film for me. Um, yeah. Hell yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, uh, Jimmy the Chris's character, like as the way they bring her back after 40 years. Uh, Cause again, like I said, this is the 2018 is a direct sequel to the original. So in this storyline, she was just a babysitter who was attacked 40 years before. And then now Michael Myers gets out and, for whatever reason, he's still stalking her. So it has nothing right. to do with the, with their uh, being siblings or anything. And just how she became kind of like that, um, also a, little, talk a about, little bit of a hermit, so. We should also talk about, by the way, um, yeah, sorry. Yes, of course she's a hermit in this one. And then kind of like you see her arc and where yeah. she gets to end um, because obviously she's been anticipating seeing him. And now that she's seen him, what happens to her, you know, throughout the run, throughout the run of the three movies that they, that were just made. But I would say like also the uh, stamp of approval of, of John Carpenter and obviously Jamie Lee Curtis for these three films. Right. Right. Yeah. And Carpenter did the music with his son um, while he's been, I, I think we were talking about it uh, a couple episodes back, but uh, I, I've been able to see him perform live a couple of times um and perform his um albums 
that he's uh, created recently, along with all the original scores, including um, Halloween. And um, so he's been working quite a bit on music. That's been his main thing the last like 10 years. And so he did the score for this one with his son and uh, Cody Carpenter. And this is like a perfect uh, like handoff. It's, that's kind of how I saw it. So, yeah. 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 All right. So we're on to number two. Number two. What do you got? Halloween 666, Curse of Michael Myers, number two Ooh, for me. Fuck yes. Love it. That is my number five. So good. Uh, all right. What do you got? So this one, just really quick, I would say this one I was always late to. I remember vividly you always uh, talking this one up at Suncoast. And this was like one of the last sequels that I had ever seen. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't think they played it on TV very much. So what, for whatever reason, I just didn't see it too much growing up. And I saw it uh for the first time maybe like 10 years ago and uh blew my mind away it was, it, it's great so yeah, what, what, what made what makes it what made it so great for you instantly because like i said you've well, been talking about for forever i think like what you said like everything you want to see in the halloween movies you know it kind of like tried to tie in a lot of what was happening in the universe um and again even a little bit of like the halloween three uh storyline and it kind of like you know this like a uh, secret society that like is controlling Michael and then there's just like he comes back to Haddonfield and in Haddonfield it's just like the perfect Halloween setting the perfect Halloween town you got the old house that people are like bought, you know living yeah. in now and the, the the abusive dad you know <laughs> who's like such a dick and you just love like they like the characterization of these people it's like it's not even it's just kind of like fun even that like knowing like you're like i can't wait till this like abusive dad gets killed and then he gets killed in the right. best possible way yeah, yeah, and yeah. um you know that the, those kind of things it's like stupid little petty stuff like the story is just the story it doesn't need to be great it just needs to be like michael myers is coming back and like here's these people they got the radio dj who's just like completely fun and like you know you can't wait to see how he meets his demise um and then, of course, Paul Rudd does add this like little bit of like, OK, here we're seeing Tommy Doyle again. And what has happened to Tommy Doyle? Like since the original, he's now right. a grown up. And how does he connect it also with Donald Pleasance in his last role here uh, in the in the franchise before he passed away, who kind of like just is like, I know Michael's coming back someday and, you know, gets to be part of this as well. Um I just think it's really well done and fits in there number two, because it's always also in my life been something I have like paraded around and saying like people you got to see this film and so I always like have like a love for it um that's that's my hot take on the uh the number two in the Halloween films ranked yeah that's the thing it I feel like that was a hot take when we were working at Suncoast but it, yeah. as, as time goes on that's that's not a hot take at all because you were right the entire time so uh <laughs> I, I, I feel like people have finally come around uh to that one for sure and it was always kind of like although i feel like a lot of people will still maybe dismiss it uh because of paul rudd they're just like oh paul rudd was in a, a horror movie it's just it just is what it is but like so this was well it's it kind was, of like what i'm yeah, sorry i just want to say it's kind of like what i said earlier to you about like when i started uh, halloween ends it's like immediately putting you in haddonfield Halloween, yeah. which is what people want to do. So give me that, put me in there. And this movie starts with Mr. Sandman, if you recall. And it's oh, like yeah. the knife goes into the, the pumpkin and then you're in the universe right away. Like it puts you in Halloween time. It's the fall, the you know, the leaves are changing, all of that kind of stuff. And that's like what I always want to see. I always want to feel like I'm in Haddonfield right. and shit's going down because it's Halloween, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I still have more to say on it, but I'm going to I'm sorry. Where? I didn't mean to cut you off too. No, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm touching on your, your point when you pointed out Mr. Sandman. Where Sa Mr. Sandman wasn't used in the original movie, right? I don't think so. No. no. Yeah, I feel, but it was definitely used in H two O, which was after six six six. When was I mean, first... Sandman is kind of like I think saying like it's just someone who's putting you to sleep, you know that. That's right, yeah, the point. no, no. I just mean the song itself. I'm just trying to like it's not referencing the original, but for whatever reason in my mind, it feels like it was kind of using the original, but like like we said, it wasn't in there at all. So I don't know. Like it's become like an okay. unofficial song of the franchise, even though it wasn't in the original. So it's like great when people are able to like. Um, 
they do that in the Dahmer series really well with the music and different things. Like when it's something so evil and so terrible, but they're able to use this song that's so bright and so um, uplifting to kind of like have the juxtaposition of, of, of it. Like meaning Mr. Sandman is about like, Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream, you know, make it the cutest that I've ever seen. And it's so like 1950s. Oh, I could listen to that all day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a 1950s, bright, like um, yeah. uh, uplifting, but you're about to like enter this world of like, horror and it's also like giving you a nice foreshadowing of sandman the guy who puts you to sleep um all those are always some of my favorite things when you can like have the duality of like yeah. this really bright and fresh song with like this really really dark storytelling yeah maybe i'm just confused with back to the future it's the first song marty hears when he's in 1955 sandman so right totally <laughs> totally yeah back to the future yeah 100%. um but yeah so paul rudd probably the most serious performance he's ever given. It's like, he is just like one of the best comedic actors alive, but like he, this is uh, early in his career. It's the same year as Clueless, which is also a comedic performance, but like, he's like so serious and over the top in the best possible way in this movie. I think he's perfect for it. Um, I mean, I disagree because Cider House Rules, he was playing like a serious role, but it wasn't really like a lead role. So I've never seen that. I didn't even know he was oh, in that. Gotcha. I read that book though. I never saw the movie. <laughs> I should gotcha. probably Yeah, I mean, out. you know, Michael Caine, I was on board right away. Right, 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 right. Um, do you have a preference uh, for the version of Halloween 6, like the theatrical or the producer's cut? Yeah. Oh, man, I don't know if I even knew that there was a difference. I, I, had no, I didn't even know about that. Well, uh, the producer's cut. Oh, I really cut. know it's the producers, you know, or the, the original. Well... So you might be uh, watching. So what happens at the end? So there, yeah, there's two different endings. There's a theatrical cut and then there's a producer's cut. Well, the so the cut, ending is like Donald Pleasant's basically getting killed in the uh, the sanatorium and you hear him scream and it goes into the ending. Uh, so that sounds like the theatrical cut. Uh, the producer's cut has like a switch out where Michael Myers, um, it's got like the satanic ring um and michael myers gets like frozen in it by paul rudd and no shit yeah there's a whole and there's all like like i said the last 15 minutes of these two versions are just completely different so the the, the one you're talking is the theatrical and i think that probably is the one that's more widely available like if you just look up it on amazon that's probably the one you're going to be watching but the producer's cut gets a lot of love because it's it is um a little bit um it's exactly what it sounds like. It's what the producers wanted, which was a little bit more uh, over the top. Uh, the theatrical cut kind of was uh, became a little bit more reserved. But um, I mean, they're both they're both awesome. I mean, essentially, you're watching the same movie. There's just uh, there's a decent amount of differences that uh, I didn't know if you had any preference to, but definitely doesn't change how great the fucking movie is. So right. Um, but yeah, like I said, that was a, a late find for me. It was probably the last sequel that I ever saw. And um, I'll just say this with the, with the, with producers cuts and stuff like that. Sometimes that's a cash grab for me. Like, okay, see like the new footage you didn't see. Um, so I don't know in the Halloween series, I would think that that would be more of a cash grab just because these films are kind of like, they know people right. just want to see Michael Myers and is there going to be more kills or something like that? And so right. in the mind of the consumer, they might be like, yeah, I got to go spend my money to get that producer's cut while you have a movie like cinema Paradiso and they do the director's cut. And I'm like, don't fucking ruin the movie. Like, I don't think that's a cash grab at all, but like I, I've never even seen the director's cut. Cause I don't want to know that movie in any other format than what it is. Cause it's perfect in my opinion. So, no, anyway. not 99 out of a hundred times. Uh, it's not usually, uh, worth pursuing seeing an alternate cut unless there's dramatic uh changes or if like the movie was like seriously compromised and then like kind of like, like touch of evil where like you know you have a full with the dvd version of it orson welles's full page of notes basically scathing yeah. notes saying right, like right, you right. fucked up my movie how dare you and then years later they tried to like make it to his like specifications because it's orson welles you know right what right, I mean? right uh i mean as we, as we were talking like alternate cuts it's not officially a director's cut but alien three um from david fincher it was his first um 
studio movie um that got completely taken away from him like he's disowned it like he 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 just was uh he definitely doesn't consider it his own movie because they cut it up so much but there is a an assembly cut uh that is widely available where it's not his movie but it does put in all the stuff that he tried to get in into the film which covers a lot more themes um on religion and whatnot and it's the crazy different movie so much better uh with all the additional really? stuff than the theatrical cut that everybody saw Remind me three winona rider is that right no no definitely not that's number oh. four uh three is the one where sigourney's on the she crash lands on the planet the prison planet uh with a lot of uh pipasa weights in it charles s dutton dutton oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a very dour like very somber uh movie it's like uh, very bleak uh it's definitely not over the top like aliens or anything uh it's just a single alien and it, like i said it covers a lot of uh, themes like religion and redemption and uh oh i think i lost pat All that stuff is fleshed out so much more with all the stuff that David Fincher tried to get in, but they cut. Gotcha. Uh, you, you, you got me back? Time? Yeah, I lost you for a second, but uh, then it caught up with it. I don't know. It was weird. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me all right Your now? point came through, but like you, you, your video was paused. Whatever. All good. Okay. Sorry about that, listeners. We're back. <laughs> uh But yes, Halloween, the two, the, the two cuts for 666, both worth your time. Um, Oh, yeah so that was your number two right yeah so my number two which we can talk about now rob zombie halloween two all right let me hear your this first is, this uh, is my on. yeah this is my hot take this is this is my favorite sequel um of all the halloween movies and as we've mentioned we've been kind of leading up to it you probably guess the crazier the movie the more i like it because this movie is batshit uh, bonkers. Um, I love everything that uh, Zombie started with, like his uh, his first movie, but then moved into with the Halloween two. Laurie is basically suffering from PTSD. Michael is a homeless drifter uh, going around and just, uh, like I said, just impaling people with a knife rather than actually stabbing them. And I love how this is basically a surrealist film with all the images of uh, Sherry Moon walking around with the white horse. I think it just, it sets the tone for what a crazy Michael Myers story uh, I mean, is. probably what people hated, but I love that stuff it's, too. That's precisely right. It's, it, it, what everything, every every time I watch a video or, or hear somebody talk about like all the stuff they hate about Halloween to him, like that's the reason why it's one of my favorites. Um, but it is so well directed um, for Rob Zombie, I should say. That's a caveat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you've definitely stated that he's not the greatest director of all yeah, time. Yeah, but sure. he's a great artist, though, which is, you know, oh, even yeah. harder. So, um, and and yeah, like the images of Michael and this are great. Um, so this is another one, as we were just talking about with um, Six, where there is two different versions, the theatrical and then the director's cut. They're not crazy different, but the ending of this one is is pretty different the last five minutes and it definitely uh the director's cut is what puts it over the top for me um to refresh your memory i mean the original uh the theatrical cut just ends with laurie stabbing michael and then coming out and um basically just standing in front of the cops and that's almost the end of it whereas the director's cut michael comes out you actually see his mask come off He's got this giant beard and his long hair, and it's just like it's so it takes you back. It takes uh it takes you aback every time you see it because you're actually seeing Michael Myers' face. And he tries to attack Loomis, and then they shoot him, and then they shoot Lori, who's actually starting to become uh Michael Myers. Like you can the the connection that has been like kind of there throughout the entire movie is made. And then they cut to this uh uh musical montage of of a cover of Love Hurts. And it, it and it shows Lori um, in the mental hospital, seeing the the white horse with Sherry Moon Zombie, and it, it's like I said, it's just it's it's such a perfect uh, capper to the craziest sequel uh, in this entire franchise. It's very 
a la psycho too you know like yeah yeah, yeah. Just yeah. standing there point. not really doing much not very you know pretty stoic well and, she just starts uh, smiling when she sees the white horse and because she's like fully embodying like this uh this evil possession essentially right yeah um, of her brother. i love this film i love what he did with it i love that you know he also explores loomis's like unraveling into like hollywood kind of um stardom because of like who he was and he you know gets to talk. he's like completely obsessed with it still yeah but he's yeah. using it for his own advantage and um he gets called out on it all the time but he's sort of like now like the celebrity type figure i like that he <laughs> went there with with Lewis, yeah. you know like I, he's such a prick um, in this movie and it's i love it yeah. such a prick and you love yeah. him kind of in the first one which is an interesting reversal because he does you have see that he really yeah. Yeah, you definitely think that yeah. he wants to help Michael in the first one. And in the second one, it's like, whoa, he it's like a 180 almost. Um, and I, I, again, I think they kind of, uh, it seems contradictory, but I think they can exist. I mean, it's like they were like 30 years apart, 20, 30 years apart. And I totally believe that he had empathy for Michael in the first one and was trying to help. And then, you know, well, I couldn't do that, but I might as well make some money on the book tour. So, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, love that i love the fact that like it's sherry moon too in those um things because like his mom dying in the first one you know by suicide because she just couldn't fucking handle it um comes back in sort of this like role where they're he's also talking about like what that means that connection of his mother and like the only person that really she, she kept on trying but then like realized there was nothing i could do that obviously yeah. is something he's trying to say affected michael you know and why he became who he became right yeah, I'm, we're definitely going to put a link uh, to Love Hurts in the show notes because uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, it's a wild, it's a wild take for a movie to end with. And if you have seen it, it's a good song to revisit again, especially. And again, great music choice, you know. Yeah, it, it's a callback uh, to the first one, and that's what uh, his mother was dancing to at the club. So, right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I feel like this his movies are uh, getting more appreciation than they've ever got now just with time and then with um people uh having their own reactions to the new trilogy um because that happens with everything every time you get a new reiteration of something you kind of look back to what was before and you realize that maybe there was a little bit more uh, it's hard for it. people to it's hard for people to um detach themselves from what they want right. out of franchise yeah. you know because it, it, they love the original so much and rightfully so i have a feeling we're going to talk about our number one here and it's going to be the original and um i didn't think that was going to be a surprise for anybody this list is not this is not climactic there's 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 only one answer for it yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the thing is that once that movie is made and it's such a classic like what it what it becomes after that is kind of up to generations and people are watching these films wanting every time to get exactly what they got out of the first one and it's never going to happen which is why halloween ends for me was such a great film because you know they tried something really drastically different and also gave us something new um in a franchise that like is so beloved it's really really tough to do that um but still gave um the proper amount of respect to you know the franchise in general uh i thought you know i'm all for that and that's why i liked and always like stood on my soapbox and told people about the rob zombie versions that i loved them since they since they first came out because i thought this is like the most respectful you can like you just said it to me the best way that he's an artist rob zombie's an artist like you know like the art that i do behind me right like what makes me different? There's a lot of people that paint. There's a lot of people that do music. What makes you stand out? Rob Zombie is clearly stood out through time from his bands and his music and his aesthetic of a very, very focused artist that also harkens back on horror, which through and horror through time, which he yeah. definitely uses as an inspiration, but as an artist makes it his own. And that's why these Rob Zombie versions are so good because he understands Halloween. He understands Halloween and why it's so good. And then used and infused his years of understanding of horror movies and artistry and put it on film for us all to love. And if you can view it that way, instead of viewing it like 
it's not what I expected from a Halloween film or it's not like the John Carpenter version, then you're going to love those films. I mean, you just will. And top that, man, that, that perfectly sums it up. Yeah, like I was saying, like Rob Zombie, he has images in his mind. And although the direction isn't always there, he always manages to get them on screen. And I mean, to be honest, that's got to be one of the hardest parts of filmmaking or any type of uh, creation is just, just getting what you see, hear, or uh, think in your mind out to somebody else to see and, 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 and listen to and, and view and I think he nails it. I mean, like I said, especially with number two. So great. Yeah. So number one film in the Halloween franchise, uh, not surprisingly for both of us, it looks like John Carpenter's Halloween. Yeah. It's not even like, there isn't really even a, a question. I mean, I, I'm open to everybody's list. Uh, you put any movie anywhere, except for, you know, the first one goes on top. That's the only one that uh, if, so you, why, if, you, if you don't have that, if you don't have that, then your list might be invalid. But like, forget um, about the fact that this movie inspired all the movies we just talked about, right? I mean, that would be that would be. Oh, I was going to say, I mean, that would be the reason for potentially not putting it at number one. But I don't know. I mean, Carpenter is is one of the first directors that I fell in love with um, at a young age, and this was. Um, it was really the one, two combo of seeing Halloween and the thing when I was like maybe 10 and, uh, just being blown away by both of them. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about the thing and some other date, uh, but Halloween was just like the most perfect summation of what, um, minimalism can do in terms of fear. Cause like everything about this movie is just like, you're seeing Michael, but at the same time, you're, uh, he's a um he's a presence throughout but you never quite know where he is who he is and what he represents and it's just like so perfectly captured throughout the original and then you put on top of the fact that it's a fucking killer score uh still one of the best scores of all time and it understands horror in a way that no other movie does. And that's because John Carpenter was obsessed with horror and other genres, but especially horror. And he was able to translate that with uh, his early work. Well said. And I know that you love John Carpenter more than anybody that I've ever met, um, which is also awesome. Like that you can kind of like know his amount of work and reference it and still be like, yeah, it comes down to like the guy just is a unique artist, just like uh, Rob Zombie was. I don't think John Carpenter really loved the Rob Zombie versions and stuff like that. Um, from what I remember hearing that he, he kind of was like, those were garbage, but you Carpenter's can't deny that. Yeah, well, <laughs> and you can't deny crank. that both yeah. people, are, well, you can't deny that both people are original artists. Like I was saying earlier, John Carpenter yeah. did yeah. To do something brand new. And also, to just kind of piggyback on what you said, because that's <clears throat> exactly what I would say. You know, the score, like, it's so dark and it's Halloween the way you want to see it. You know, you got these high school kids and babysitters and like all the perfect mix of like the night, the, the, the perfect hell night that's about to ensue. But to me, and you know, sanitariums, um, uh, nur nurses and doctors, like trying to figure out what's going on with this guy wreaking havoc um and never let him out he's he's pure evil you know you get to see what he does at the beginning which is killing his sister which is about as diabolical an opening for a horror movie that you could you know uh and also just the idea that in the end you don't know what happens to him either he's like it's all it's like whoa this guy didn't, there's no finish. Like he's out there still, you know? And he just like terrorized this whole town. So there's really nothing at the end that makes you feel like good about what you just saw. It makes you think this evil is out there and it could come back at any time, which again, <laughs> you know, led way to all these sequels that we talked about. You know, the, the first one does so much brand new stuff and on no budget, of course which like any great director, Scorsese's, some of their best movies were done when they were just like, I want to make something great, unique, cool. I don't have any money, but I'll find a way to do it. And that's another reason why this movie wins, if you ask me. No, yeah. I mean, you're definitely uh, nailing it with the uh, ending. All the other um, 
moments that I was saying, like the ending of Michael Myers, like in terms of ending his, his death, the, the ending of this film, um, when it, after um, Loomis shoots him and then you see his body's gone and then it cuts to all the different scenes that you saw or the placements like of you saw throughout the movie, like the, the, the closet, uh, the uh, living room, all the places where Michael Myers was attacking um, people, especially Lori. And so just, and without moving the camera, it's just showing those places, but then you hear uh, the Michael Myers breathing over that. It's like, that just sums it up right there. It's like, he's just this living presence that's going to be around every, any corner. Uh, and you see it completely with showing those scenes while hearing him breathe and, and then and just cuts to just credits. Witnessed, and, yeah. and you just witnessed those, those, those um, like, you're right. I don't think I've ever seen it done that way. Uh, until that movie you just witnessed the horror that was in those rooms so your mind is going back there without doing anything but showing the place the location of where the car the carnage happened with that you know underneath like breathing just thinking like holy shit and it's yeah. so so relatable to people because it's like your house, your, you know, yeah, yeah. where your safety is, like where you're always safe. And you're just seeing these scenes that are so relatable to you as an audience member. And you just saw like the most horrific thing happen in them. It's, it's frightening on a whole nother level without even showing Michael Myers or anything else happening. Like it, beautiful ending to a fantastic horror movie. I mean, that's, a, that's a huge reason what you're saying was like, why, like in the seventies, like we take for granted now, but like in the seventies, uh, seeing a horror movie set in the suburbs was like that just didn't happen it was the, uh, there was no like the entire point of the suburbs was to feel safe so the idea of uh, Michael Myers being a serial killer in these in this safe suburban uh, area that, that's uh, part of the reason why it threw so many people off at the time in a good way and probably was uh, well, I mean obviously in the 80s too I'm sorry Pat no, no, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like in, at the end of the '70s, this is uh, what it kind of introduced that, and then uh, goes full force and force. Right, in like the 80s. now all of a sudden, Freddy Krueger can get you in your dreams, which is another safe space for you, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you got you. Know, I can't go to camp anymore because uh, Jason's gonna come get me, you know. And like I or space, I'm like no, nowhere safe in any of these places that are supposed to be like safe havens as a kid, and it's terrifying. The '80s yeah, yeah. were a great time for horror, you know. Oh my god! I mean, that's that's why we're doing this right now because we couldn't get uh couldn't don't have uh, uh uh enough to say about it so love it um well I, I i don't know if you have anything else to say but that was a great run through i hadn't really talked about those films that way so thanks for opening it up uh to do this um this was pat's idea to do our our top Halloween films to rank you guys and we'd love to know your thoughts I'm sure you guys are going to disagree with both <laughs> of our lists uh probably We're definitely uh, down with that yeah probably very passionately but that's the best part is like these films open us up to be able to talk about uh you know fun stuff like this around Halloween and that's why it's my favorite holiday like movies like this franchises like this you can talk to your friends about it and uh, I don't know. It's what keeps me going and back to see these films whenever they have a new one pop up. Yeah. I mean, like I said, there's no wrong uh, order uh, for these movies. Maybe, you know, my number one's kind of guaranteed at the top. But uh, I mean, if you have Resurrection at number two, I'm totally cool with that. Because like I said, I'm happy <laughs> to watch that movie anytime. So and see yeah, Busta yeah. do the roundhouse kick to the face. All right, well, I'm going to uh, say goodbye and, and we're going to follow up with another episode uh, right after this. But I wanted to just say thanks, Pat, and thanks to the audience for listening. Have the happiest Halloween, you guys, and um, be safe. But also share with us your favorite Halloween movies. Let us know what you're watching. Uh, this is the, the fun community part of the remainders that we enjoy so much. And Pat, talk to you next about hacks and Aaron, we'll be talking about Halloween for years to come, I feel. Awesome talking to you. You too, boss. All right. Uh, signing off. Remainders, have a great Halloween, everybody.